Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. Today, we are going to be doing some inlay on this little cross job here. As you can see, I have already started on three sides here, and we are going to go over putting in the last little bit here. Here's the mocha man, I don't know if the camera will get this. You guys can see some of the patterning there. With fairly minimal inclusions. There's one inclusion right there, but that'll grind out. It's a fairly solid billet, the Mokume. You can see right there on the side where the quarter's all stacked up. This here is in a kneeled state, and that's what we want to take and actually inlay this in. So that's a point to put out. Um, what I did essentially was take, and after I had prepped this cross in one of the other videos uh, where I was filing that slight crown to it like I had explained. I went ahead and ground this and filed this to fit so this way it fits inside there nice and snug like. It's okay if it's got a little bit of gap in space that's alright um, as you're just going to rivet it down and you can see it matches it mostly to the most part. So as you can see that's pretty close. Now, one thing I did do wrong on this that I'll go ahead and point out, and it's caused me a little extra headache. If you notice down here, I'm having to use a small little planishing tool to try to close up this gap. And the reason for that being is I did not have enough material in here. Well, not enough material, one. And two, I actually radiused that part I was talking about in there. You guys can see that there. I actually radius that in there too much, put too much of a chamfer on it. It didn't need that much. Um, I was tired. I was getting ready to go out of the town uh, for me and my wife's 10th year wedding anniversary, and I was kind of stressing it. So I ended up doing a little more work than what I should have, but that's okay. We'll recoup from it. So you don't need, like there, you don't need that much crown to actually hold this bit in. I'll show you this in here. Boy, I really like the macro lens on this phone here. Um, anyways, yeah, for those of you who don't know, I've been filming here with my phone. Uh, the phone I'm using is an LG V20. This isn't a sponsored video. This is just a, just a little tip. You know, that's the phone I've been using, and I've been pretty impressed with it so far. But uh, anyways, enough about that. So we are going to take and essentially install this just like a big rivet, and then we will go ahead and seal up some of them lines before we grind it down and do our final shaping of the whole bit. As you can see, I've had to do some other little tweaks and fan angles and um, all that's eventually going to get ground flush and flat and, and uh, hopefully it'll look real pretty. So I'll be going over just this little bit over here at the anvil and hopefully I can get a good shot on it and uh, everything will be in focus and yeah, we'll go from there guys. Okie doke everybody, here we are at the anvil. So the biggest trick to this is to try to make sure that this rides in the center. You don't want it to be riding up too high and all to one side or too low and all to the other side. You want it to kind of come up as flush as you can get it. And then we're also going to use a crowned face hammer. Um, this just happens to be one that I've forged for that purpose when I need things like this. If you don't have this, a ball peen hammer could work as long as it's a large ball peen of some sort or a, or a large broad face to it. And really all we're trying to do is get this to spread out like a rivet in this joint. So we're going to give it a few taps here and hopefully this will get it to start to lock in. So as you can see, it doesn't take a whole lot and that's already locked in there. And then we're going to check it to make sure that it's centered. As you can see, it's a little more on one side than the other. Just adjust it a little bit. And then make sure that's on the anvil. And go ahead and continue to peen that down a little bit. Now, if you've noticed, I'm working at one end first. That's key. You want to take and go ahead and lock in the one end so it's not jostling around or you're not getting a teeter-totter effect so to speak. And then we're just using light blows because like in riveting, the harder you hit, 
the actual material, the copper, the more energy goes straight through the rivet or the piece, the work piece. And what that'll do for you is that'll cause it to squeeze down more, which will push out more, but necessarily won't get the top surface area to move and fill up these gaps. So we really want the opposite of that. We want the top surface to move and fill up the gaps without expanding the center just yet. And you'll see why that's important in a second. So all I'm doing here is just trying to work this bit down into the grooves. And I'll do it from the other side. You have to make sure that this is a through rivet that you work it evenly. You have to make sure you work it evenly from both sides. As you can see, that's coming out pretty well. Pull it up here and see if we can't get this to focus. There we go. So you can see how that's working there. So then we'll have to take out the extra work and clean up these sides. Like I said if you before, if you do not if you did not crown it as much as I did, this should seal up really nice and tight. But like I said, I had made a mistake, and so therefore I'm paying for it now. But uh, yeah, so once you get the sides kind of buttoned down to where it's filling nice and tight here, you can go ahead and start hitting the crowned bit in the center. I don't know if I can show you that. Yeah, there you go. You can see how it's kind of slightly crowned. Then you can start squeezing it down, and it should help close those gaps up even more. Readjust. There we go. Okay, as you can see, that's definitely swollen in there. And it's actually bulged her sides a little bit. So that's how you know that you're really getting it in there nice and tight. Like I said, I will have to go through the trouble I will have to go through the trouble that hopefully you guys won't have to worry about to go ahead and push these sides in a little closer. But yeah, so that's essentially inlaying, a two-sided inlay there. So that's working out fine. Now I'll go back over the workbench and I'll just kind of show you how this fits up to the base. And then I will do a final reveal video once I get it done. I hate doing this to y'all and I would like to take and be able to show y'all all, all the steps, but I'm simply just out of time Ladies and gents, uh, I need to make this girl happy for her for her wedding. And, uh, you know, that's more important that my customer be happy. So I'm going to go ahead and get this finished up for them. And then I'll do a kind of a reveal video. And I'll talk a bit about what I would do differently in the future. And, you know, and you guys will get to see the final product in that video. So anyways, for all you guys and gals out there that's been watching along on this little cross journey, this series... Uh, you know, thanks for watching and uh, yeah, just uh, let me know what you thought of the video and what how, how you thought it turned out um, in, in the other bit. But we'll go over to the bench real quick before I forget and I'll just kind of show you how it fits up. Okay, everyone. Here we are. So that's my base all cleaned up there. As you can see, this is the one that we've done with the flame cut edge. Looks pretty neat. Pretty cool. This is just a scotch brighted surface finish, and it won't be this bright when it's all said and done. But, And then that just goes in there like so. And excuse the camera. So that's the fit up there. So we're going to move this back. I apologize. 
as you can see, my workshop's an absolute wreck. Yeah, and there you go. So that is essentially how it's going to look like. There's still a lot of work into this yet. Uh, I may do a video on engraving. I've got uh, some hand engraving to do of some initials and some date. Not so sure on that yet. I may just do it as a different video some other time, maybe not on this job. Like I said, I'm pretty much at my limit on this. I have to get it out the door. So, But anyways, so that's a little bit of a preview. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think about it. Uh, put it in the comment section down below. So that's it for today, ladies and gents. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you haven't got a chance yet to do it, uh, you may want to subscribe. I release videos as often as I can, and uh, most of the time, two times a day. So thanks for watching, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.